Hello and welcome to the 2017 Hyper League Dawn of War Tournament hosted by your one and only Angry Crow. Today we're going to be looking at round two of the or game two of the first round match between Memage and General Havoc. Let's load up this scrimmage. So let's uh, see in my loaded recordings that I have uh, another match and get it going. Today we're going to be fighting on a, an ice map apparently called Torrance. The same map, the same um, armies apply as last round if you did catch that. Uh, Memage is the Necrons and General Horus over here as Space Marine. General Horus, I keep doing it. General Havoc, please excuse me. General Havoc might have learned his lesson from the first round and starts to build right away. You can see a couple of scouts come up, chapel barracks immediately come down, ready to go, and get some units out there. And notice how he's not focusing so heavily on building more builders. Uh, serv what are they? Servi servitor. Um, we might have another one coming down really quickly, but very quickly, three scouts, as three, three scout squads backing up the servitor, splitting them up just to get that low-hanging fruit and get a little bit more resources coming into his base from the early game. <coughs> now, on the other hand, we have the scrap-collecting undead robot army, also known as the Necrons, in the western quadrant of the map, already building up resources these scarabs working together many scarabs make light work and you can see again we have necron warriors fast on the move ready deadly and also very fashionable this time around looking good let's open up that fog of war and see what's happening on the map so you can see a bunch of control points that are already being taken and uh Memage is still more interested in scouting it would seem um now, those servitors are out there trying to build communications arrays um, to increase the capacity of production and resources that are taken in. Uh, let me switch over here to our to the resources and the income of our guys really quick. Our power resource and our requisition resource or our, or our ability to recruit more units is going to be primarily driven by how many of these salvage or slag deposits that we control or strategic points well not necessarily now here is Memage and his Necron warriors looking at the far corner of the map he map finds nobody in the southernmost corner and starts to trek toward the opposite side where General Havoc stands we now have a force commander who is going out on his own to fight for freedom, for the Emperor, for justice, backing up this collection of, of scouts. He's going to want to select all of these guys and have them move together once he's captured these points. And so now we have a sizable force, and I think it's very clear that we have an operating, just uh, <laughs> not operating knowledge, but operating sense of kind of how these space marines work together. As you can see here, He's not particularly interested in spending the rest of his capacity on infantry, but it appears on the mini-map that this collection of Necron warriors is going to discover General Havoc at any second now. And so he descends upon them. I'm going to focus on this commander really quick as he soaks up a lot of the damage and he gives his background units an opportunity to pick off other Necron warriors. Um, it seems like this is actually a much more fair fight than what we saw in round one. Um, just taking into account that we have actual teamwork. Notice the scouts actually fell really quickly. They are light and quick units, but our force commander is not taking a whole lot of damage here. All right, General Havoc definitely has the advantage in this battle, and you can see that cleaning up very quickly. Memage is going to lose quite a few units and that actually gives General Havoc a chance to sort of turtle and build up a little bit more. And he's going to have to, because it looks like the Necron Warriors coming from the north, who were supposed to be backup, could not get there fast enough. And so Memage is sending out more and more Necron Warriors, and if I am correct, probably also thinking about teching up. So here we have a summoning core 
which allows for advanced infantry units to start to show up on the map. Um, and I don't think that he can do that inside of an existing unit. Like you can only really uh, overpopulate or increase the population of existing units. Um, but they're looking for revenge. He knows by the his scouts over here, this is the corner of the map where General Havoc lives, but he's not really going to be able to take down anything serious. Remember, just finds one of their builders, the Servitors, and tries to chase it down, but he doesn't really want to get led into an attack, it seems like, you know. He's got to collect some of his units. You know, he knows now that, you know, there's a little bit more confidence being built up in this combination of forces that's coming after him right here. A scout goes down. But the commander comes back, and he's backed up by a squad of marines. And, I mean, really, what needs to go on here, if General Havoc would just update his squad members as he's going, it's kind of an uncommon thing to see that happen on the fly, like just these units appearing out of nowhere. But Memich is playing D. He's trying to lead these, ma these marines, this force commander. He's trying to lead the squad into his other force up here. But they do not have the most amount of wounds. They do not have a lot of health. Um, so now we're coming to an even match, and it looks like he's able to just push the squad commander another way outside of the map. There they go. Hurt but not broken. Trying to get that higher ground advantage. Maybe causing a little bit more damage. He gets another squad of Marines to back them up that he had running around the map looking for another outpost to take over, trying to clean up. And at this point, I would say that these Necron Warriors are probably outmatched, um, just in numbers alone. He's trying to spare his squad commander, but he needs that to do damage. So it's going to be a little bit of a gamble, a little bit of a stalemate, because those numbers of those Necron Warriors, as they continue to grow, they're just going to chew away at his forces. Um, now... Adding the squad commander into the mix is going to divert the attention of the Necron warriors because that will make them focus down the most dangerous guy. But it does not. It's a little too little, too late. Necron warriors can take over this control tower, and um, General Havoc is going to have to re regroup. Uh, he's a little bit uh, seems a little bit stunned after that match. Um, Definitely a lot more action, a bit closer, um, but looking for another opportunity. Looks like there are more units down here. Just light defense, something of a warning, um, just in case there are more units out there that happen to get his attention. Now if he catches this fog of war here, you can see that he has attracted the attentions of another detachment of Necron warriors who chase his scouts away and take out his servitor, just eating away at his resources. I mean, the thing about RTS games that is kind of the beginning of the meta, if you will, is discovering, you know, that you only have a couple of different types of resources. You got the amount of time that it takes to build something, you got these two different things, these two different resources, the power and the requisition resources, and all of that adds up to kind of a gamble against a certain, you know, conflict. And so now I have a solo force commander on General Havoc's side who's going to kind of stop this attack or try and draw some of these units away from the assault on this listening post that he's established recently. And I can see a little bit of action on the opposite side of the map here where the scouts that had escaped the fray f previously um, have discovered <laughs> nobody at Memphis' base. So, Memich has just come. He's not completely overwhelming yet because we now have a nice small combined force. And this is what Space Marines really shine at. Having a point of focus that definitely can just take out, you know, a variety of units um, versus just what we have is this homogenous force of Necron Warriors. Um, it's a much higher advantage. As you notice... They're all trying to focus down this commander while these two squads of Space Marines and Scouts can just clean up these Necron Warriors behind him and call that. So we do get a little brief moment of fresh air, but um, Memage is not done yet. Let's open up the Fog of War and have a look at what's going on out here. These two Scouts are being chased down by a pretty sizable group of Necron Warriors at the moment. 
um, which they can barely stand on their own. Maybe they were trying to capture a space, but they could not get away unscathed. Um, we'll switch over to General Havoc. He now has a pretty good size and varied force, but he's going to be definitely met with some opposition, trying to avenge his guys, maybe reclaim some space that he's taken over, looking for a defensive ground to stand on in the event of another attack, which is right around the corner. Meanwhile, the Scarabs and Mehmet have decided it's time to even have not just a summoning core, but a greater summoning core, and further up the capacity of technology that this army has even more. Um, and there is also a Necron Lord, which is very similar to a commander of the Marine type, the Space Marine sort. Um, and he wants to kind of get a little bit more insurance on throwing one type of unit at a problem. Um, and so this is that problem. Here we have an entire squadron of Necron warriors trying to take down a certain, <laughs> trying to take down a control point over here. However, the varied, oh my, oh these guys are tough. But we have new units. We have Marine Assault Squad. Uh, still without heavy weapon upgrades, uh, something very serious. But you know, strength in numbers and strength in variety. You get our force commander able to just pick off the troublesome units and actually have a pretty well sized battle and four or five pretty strong units at this point um, just holding down keeping control of the base um, he does have a couple more control points but he's very 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 close to his unit cap and so what he needs to do is start to expand and take command over the map um, there are a couple of detachments out here but he can't focus on that right now. You really have to get all of these units out of the way. You've got to get these Necrons off of your back. And here we have the Shadow Necron Lord coming through. Commander against commander. Probably exploding from the underworld onto the battlefield. With a wonderful flurry. Did he teleport away? I'm not sure. Is that something he can do? Probably. But this combination of forces is great. He notices his force commander is taking a lot of damage and he backs out of the match. Gets an engineer to take a heavy voltage turret and put that up. And that is going to be what he needs as a stand against this encampment. Um, but it seems that Memich has already broken in through the back door. And he's using his Shadow Lord or his Necron Lord to take out the main structures that make up this force. So even though there was a strong defensive holdup here, it appears as though this advanced Necron Warrior Force, which I believe now have, I don't know, they're glowing now. I don't know if they're always glowing, but they look, they look more powerful, more imposing, more undead than ever, taking out <laughs> each structure remaining to really just eliminate General Havoc's capacity for unit production, because that will be the determining factor in this match. Um, before these buildings go down, I just want to hop around really quick and see what units are available. Looks like we have, is this a weapon attached to a listing post? That's a pretty cool upgrade. Um, and I think that's probably what General Havoc has planned for the rest of the match, is trying to capture these listing posts and really just make it slightly more annoying to, to get total annihilation over this match because there is definitely a lot of battle going here. He'd finally started teching up. As you can see, we have research completed on sniper training. That increases the range of scouts and sniper units. However, um, your main base and your production buildings have been destroyed, General Havoc, and the match goes to Mehmet, um, who has built up just enough tech. We can't really see for sure where his monolith is going or what he's building. Looks like he just started to build up a new level of the monolith. Um, but ready for the long haul. Memage is definitely getting ready to, he's digging in here, getting some heavier units. But that is definitely it for round two of, or game two of round one, which means round one will go to Memage. Let's have a quick review of the stats.
Um, you can see General Havoc did much better here in a lot of different categories, and the scores were much close, or much closer to each other. Match went on a bit longer, but when Mehmed really pulled forward, um, General Havoc had a sense from the first round of really combining his units to break up these large combination or these large, these large uh, battalions, or even these large units of Necron warriors, and using that variety of Space Marine units to break them apart and make them kind of focus on the force commander. Um, he was able to get a lot done in the early game, but couldn't really follow up with the tech in the late game. Because when you're on defense, it's really difficult to acquire new resources and make sure that you can support your tech tree as you go up. And Memich's early scouting game gave him a better sense of who was where on the map and what's actually contested. So wind trigger annihilated Memich absolutely takes this two out of three round one and um that'll be it for me your host angry crow i will see you next time on the um 2017 hyper leagues of dawn of war 40,000.